This will be a quick tour through some of the features of on-screen pitch count. Here's the initial screen. Let's start recording pitches in a new game, which I'll make up as we go along, just to speed things up. We'll start from the beginning, but we could start when a certain pitcher entered the game later if that's what we wanted to do. Let's look at both teams' pitchers. We'll say the Yankees with Andy Pettit pitching or the home team against the Red Sox with Josh Beckett pitching. All set. Now we're ready to go. Look at the bottom in the green area. You'll see the buttons for uh, recording pitch results. The first pitch is in there for a called strike. Note that the strike is registered in two places, one for the count on the batter in the yellow region, the other high up, higher up in the green area where the game totals for the pitcher are shown. The pitch has also been recorded as a called strike. I'll show how to see the types of strikes in a minute. Next pitch is a ball, which also shows up above. Foul ball. That's another strike, and it has been recorded as a foul ball as well. Another foul ball. The count is still one and two, but that pitch gets registered as a strike, as it should in the game totals for the pitcher. A swing and a miss for strike three. Note that we now register the strikeout instead of just having it happen automatically. I found this made recording errors less likely. Strikeout. Next batter. Ball one. Let me show you how things stand for the game totals. Just tap the de details button. Now we see much more information about the pitch results. The type of strikes and the type of third strikes are recorded. Back to the game. Ball two. Ball three. A little control trouble all of a sudden. Ball four. As with the strikeout, we need to record the walk. Now we see one runner is on base. That's the OB in the middle yellow region with one out. The O, of course. Next batter. First ball swinging. It's a ground ball to Jeter, who steps on second and throws to Teixeira for the double play. We record an out and a base path out when there's a double play. That sound means it was a third out. Sound effects can be turned off easily, by the way. Tap third out. Time to switch sides. Note that the buttons about strikes and balls, etc. have been disabled, which is indicated by the faded titles. Only buttons that make sense in the given situation are active at any time, and it prevents accidental button taps. Okay, let's see how Beckett does. You inning. That's a base hit on the first pitch. Base hit. Runner on base. Uh-oh. There seems to be something wrong with Beckett. He's having to leave the game. Looks as though they'll be bringing Manny Del Carmen in. Tap new pitcher. Enter the name. Del Carmen. Okay. Still a runner on base, but the count is there are no balls or strikes recorded uh, in the game totals for Del Carmen. We'll skip over Del Carmen's warm up tosses. First batter. Uh oh. Drilled him right in the back. That's another way to reach base. We tap other OB. Batter hit by pitch. Now we have two runners on base. Next batter. That ball is well hit. 
it may be out of here. Home run. Tap hit. Three runs. One, two, three runs in. Now, let's check Del Carmen's totals. I go to details. There are the two runs. But what about the third run? Let's review Beckett. How do we do that? We click review. We click Beckett. The run has been charged to Beckett as it should have been. Okay, I hope that's enough to give you the general idea of how on-screen pitch count works. I found it really enhances my enjoyment of the game to follow each pitch and to have all that information literally at my fingertips. And since each game is saved on my iPhone, I can go back and review the pitch results for every pitcher in every game I've recorded. It's fun, and if you're a coach, very useful.